This car is a new car for this year. It looks so similar to last year's car. Is this car going to be reliable? It's a brand new vehicle. We've seen brand new blues in the past, but let's not forget, we also saw Raul Gomez in a brand new car last year, straight out of the box, taking the win. This, I believe, is our lead car right now. That is Jason Shearer. Look at the pace of him. Let's check our directions at this point. Jason's going to be driving as hard as he possibly can. He's been going at it all day, saving his equipment, not needing more. Jason Shearer will not give up. Jason Shearer will give everything. Right, here we go. Three more corners. He goes around the first corner. He will be going past the woman. Going past the Gomez bit. He's slow. And there's rules. Okay, so Jason Shearer has one more turn to go. Raul Gomez has three more turns to go. It's Jason Shearer. He will be taking the checkered flag. All right, well, tonight we made the trek down to the East Bay, uh, Northern California, to come see Jason Shear, and this time we are on your home turf, Jason. Uh, where are we right now? Uh, we're at my shop in Danville, where you spent a lot of time as a kid. I, I did grow up uh, down here. I lived here for three or four years after college, so I'm very familiar with the area. It's an awesome area. Jeff Mello's backyard, by the way, so the OG. You have a big group of uh, friends and uh, people that help you out down here, and you don't have some big fancy commercial commercial shop with, you know, 10 bays and lifts and stuff to do your work. This is your garage in your backyard. Yeah, um, we built this, I think five years ago. It was a Miracle Trust steel building, and we put it up, uh, like three or four of us put it up, in, couple of weeks and started building cars and working in here and it's been a blast. I came into your shop and the first thing I noticed, you don't even have a car lift. No, no, we have the gantry crane. That <laughs> luckily Ole got us for $100 from his friend and, and it served us well. And really there isn't much more room besides just your car and then a bunch of space to work around it, right? Yeah, and that's kind of what I wanted. I wanted like a clean place to work on it and and we did drop a couple containers in the back for part storage so that we can be organized keeping it classy huh keeping couple it containers, containers. <laughs> um but no it's it's great you know it stays clean and focused and i don't know it's my favorite place to come at the end of the night so uh you're back from the hammers it's been about a month um here's the car right here pretty much complete a couple things taken apart uh back back in the garage just like everybody else has done um, you've already started addressing some of the things, but let's talk about the race. So sure. uh, qualifying, you went out there, you had some fast guys to, I mean, Brian Croft had already laid down a super fast uh, time, right? Yeah, and he's one of the best at qualifying for sure, you know, consistently. And you know, you always tell your crew, and I was talking to Jeff Mello about this, and he said, man, we get in the meeting before qualifying and Jason always tells everybody, I'm not going to push it too hard. You know, I just want to be top 10. I just want to be top 10. But, you know, where did you end up? Well, we got another front row start, but I, 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 mean, I mean this sincerely. Um, years ago, I, I was told by Rob Mack, who I look up to a ton, and he said, Everybody does. Best spot to start is like fourth or fifth, because off-road races have this many people just with natural attrition. They start to start the day and start the pace and if you're in that spot, you get to kind of follow them through stuff. And then if you just pick off a guy or two, you're in the lead and you have that adjusted time. And I'm like, oh, that's pretty clever. I've been able to pull it off. Well, how but. many years in a row have you been on the front row? We've had nine front row starts. Nine row. front row starts in a row, starting King of the Hammers. So that means you're either qualified first or second place for nine years. And two different cars, which that's the, that's the part that's really tough. And, and I think part of the team meeting is that I don't want to set expectations um, too high for the guys. You that can't we... disappoint them right out of the gate, or yourself. I do believe that I would like to see you start further back in the pack one of these years, so that you could, you know, show that, you know, display that uh, skill, because it isn't easy being out front. Um, you and, know, and you, you basically have to set the pace for the whole race, right? And it might not have worked out this year if you look at the race with Raul starting right behind us. And he never made a mistake, never faltered, and the race came down to under a minute. I might not have been able to actually do that, but I had the confidence that it was okay. And I think that's important because then you can drive the car to its potential and not try to go past that line. 
you know, you're driving well, to your if potential I, if and I was the car's driving, potential. I know you like being out front. If I was driving, even though it's dusty and it was a dusty year, um, I think I would want to be four or five rows back so, so I can kind of set my pace off of other people and start planning and making moves because you know, oh, I started four rows back. Your pit's going to tell you, hey, you got three minutes on him. So as long as you stay within a minute of his back bumper, you're going to win the race, right? So yeah. there is some benefit to being behind in that aspect. Um, but it seems to me like you always run your race in the front. We've had a lot of fun races. I actually looked it up just because I was curious and it took me a little bit of effort to do the digging, but we've led King of the Hammers 12 times now out of the 15 years that we've raced it. So it's a, you know, we've had a few years where we haven't gotten there. Obviously, if you say it like that and then think, we only won three of them. <laughs> We're well, not doing great out there. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> but, but let's, let's circle back to the car, right? So, um, brand new race car. It may look like the old one a lot, but it is a brand new race car. And you guys, I mean, it was all hands on deck for a year building this car. Um, it shares a lot of the same technology as the old car, but it has a lot of new technology. And to add that to qualify in the front row in a brand new race car is a whole nother level. So start a pole position, took off that morning, you were unusually you, we decided to actually go for it out of the gate because you were usually i just kind of chill mm -hmm. and you know for some reason i'm like let's get this and one dave and so really we went, set up that first lap of the race just bitching there was, was some bitching. great wide open desert um not super nasty whooped out um where you could just get after it you know i saw a video clip of you passing remote pit a uh, and I think you said something like, this is Ghost Rider uh, requesting a flyby on the radio and <laughs> at Burger did, and you guys just lit it past uh, remote. We, we turned it up a little bit for the yeah, guys. Yeah, kind of show off for the guys. Well, they I mean, spent they their, whole, go morning, go they out spent their whole morning and, driving out there and they yep. never got to see you stop, right? So, well, which is the perfect scenario, but yeah. I also wanted to give them a little bit. So we, we pushed a little harder so right through there. I watched you come through Hammertown. Um, and Feeling good. Correct me if I'm Always wrong, you good. didn't stop. In, in Hammertown. We actually got fuel. Um, oh, you did get fuel. We got fuel, okay. but that's all we needed. And uh, it was, you know, pretty much seamless. I, I think we drank some waters and got some fuel and that was it, you know. And yeah. and um, Raul was not far behind you at no. that point. And, and that yeah, was he came was, in right after you. So he was going just as fast. Just as fast. And, and I will say that the desert was a little bit easier than years past, like you said with Dave's stuff. Yeah. And we also, we were a little timid. Um, we didn't push very hard. We wanted to really have a good car for the third lap. I mean, that was our goal. It's always our goal, but we're like, hey, we've been in this, you know, being the rabbit that's getting hunted. And, and I think that even Raul now, and I mean, certainly some of the top guys are like, this is a good pace. You're not going slow. Yeah. We'll just follow you. And so I don't even think he wanted to pass me on lap one. I think he was like, no, we're cool. We're just going to run to the, you know, finish you know, this thing. And the race starts on lap three. Well, a lot of the positions stayed the same or real close on that first lap. Came through a main sure. pit. Um, you guys went out. You started lap two. Uh, that's where you got into the rocks. I mean, the first trail, I believe, was Spooners, right? Spooners, yep. Um, and this is the first time at real race speed that you have the car out there, the new car. And you're in the front of the race. You're leading. And you guys have been up that a bunch of times. I mean, and it just started going, huh? Started it was doing great. work. It was good in the rocks. It felt great. But as soon as we hit the rocks, we had our first problem. And it was like, okay, I turned on the air locker and I went to steer and I'm like, ooh, I've got no steering. And I had kind of felt it off throttle to where the steering was locking up a little bit, but I wasn't sure exactly what was going on. Once I turned the front air locker on, it was binding in the in everywhere I went. And I'm like, dang. So playing with like trying to keep the RPMs up on the throttle with so holding the brake on. So you think the rack was, didn't quite have no, the power? No, we put a new power steering pump in it before the race that was brand new out of the box. And it just was- Just a pump that wasn't putting that high wasn't pressure. Great. Okay. So we fought that, um, but we didn't fight it tremendously. And then- Stayed out front in the rocks. Stayed out front in the rocks. Everything was good. Made it back into Hammertown on lap two, but something so weird I was happened. Watching something weird feet. happened. And nobody knows exactly about what had happened, but when we left, aftershock we're driving across the desert and there's a section where you can either go down or you can go up and around and it's like nothing it's nothing but we had an indecision moment and we ended up going straight between the two and ended up kind of high centered on a rock okay. and i'm like oh my god we're stuck in the middle of the desert and so Berger got out and winched to this like little rock off to the oh, side. Berger had to get Berger out Berger got in out a, and in winched a, in the middle like of the desert open, desert open field area. right yeah, uh -huh. and and 
what was crazy was it taught us that the locker wasn't working and we were like, that's really weird. That's probably why we were stuck. So, so that's when I saw you come in on, on lap two and I'm watching the live feed and I happen to be there on the lake bed and I see these guys uh, start replacing, ripping, ripping the car apart. And I'm going, what is broken on Jason's car? And uh, they're, they're replacing the CO2 bottle and that's how you, uh, so you got a power actuate tank in there. your front. Yeah. And you have a front locker, right? Front not locker, a rear not locker. Not a rear spool in the rear. Um, and, and having the having the front end open just allows the car to be so much much more nimble, so nice turn good, be unbound up. So, uh, you know, I'm looking at it going, why are they changing the CO2? And then I'm going, well, the only thing that runs on CO2, I didn't realize, I think, does the, anything in the transfer case, there's just the air locker, right? Just the air so locker. I'm going, why? And it took some time. I would say minute and a half, maybe. There's a little bit of time there. But yeah. here's, here's the thing that you got to realize, too. And that's because you were out of CO2 because the locker wasn't working. Burger gets back in the car, and we go across you know, Emerson, and we're, we're hauling ass. Everything's running good. And I, he goes, well, that was a crazy shit show. And I go, nah, that was one of those blessings in disguise because I'm the eternal optimist. Yeah. But I'm like, if we hadn't known that the front air locker was broken, we would show up into the rocks with no air locker. And when this and race would be over. the locker wasn't broken, you were out of air. We were out of, we thought we were out of air. We thought you were out of air. We thought okay. we were out of air. And I'm like, we must have lost the bottle. Maybe it, here's what I assumed is we have never run the car for that many hours in a row and that there was enough heat buildup that the bottle actually has a pressure relief valve. Yeah, and we thought we lost yeah. the pressure relief valve because gotcha. the bottle was hot. So I was thinking about telling the guys to drain off half of a bottle so we had some more room for expansion. But I'm like, you know what, it's already warm in the pit. The bottle that they're going to put in there and everything, we're going to be fine. And it like, turns out that probably, that really wasn't the problem. Wasn't the because issue at all. When, when I got here today, the, the diff's out on the table there and it has an internal leak, it's leaking air inside, right? It's so, leaking air. But we so did get some actuations air, out of it. Yeah, you did. Get, so the first, the rock, the, the second rock lap there, you got to use the locker a bunch of times. You replace the CO2 bottle, you go out on your third lap. And you're, you're now going, but here's how we're smart only going to use that when we need it. I want to give some credit to my team. Yeah. They're like, that bottle's going to take a while. After they fueled the car and put the bottle on, they also gave me fresher tires, mm -hmm. which was amazing because they knew that the oh, amount they of were time, taking the time to they're taking the time the already Let's so they could do the tires. retire. So yeah. I had fresh tires in the rear, which is yeah. huge for going into lap three. And we had the air locker. I was like, this is ours. We got this. Now, so you right? entered lap three in the lead. Not very much in the lead. Nope. At that point, I think it was just like the first lap, maybe two minutes and Raul came in behind you, right? Yep. Um, and so you head out on lap three and you start hitting the rock trails. And on lap three, you have to do some bonus stuff. You have to go to sledge. There's, there's uh, other trails you got to hit. Um, and you're hitting lap traffic. So something in the first video, um, when I interviewed there, you down at the Hammers, I said something and then I'm kind of embarrassed I said it. And I said, Jason... Um, you know, a lot of people are, that I interview, they're saying that part of winning this race is luck. Mm -hmm. And I'm sorry for saying that because I know how much all these teams and how hard they work. And to go to a team and go, oh, it's just going to be lucky if you win. That's not what no, I meant. No, I didn't take it that that's way. Not what it's I the meant. lap traffic. So you don't want any pieces of the pie of your race puzzle to be luck. If it is, it is. But it's not, it's not. Uh, unlucky when you forget to put oil in the differential. It's not unlucky um, when a part fails that when you were prepping you didn't put it in right. You know, so you need to have everything working right. Your team firing on all cylinders. But on lap three, now that I'm thinking about it, there is some luck involved because you're going to run into lap traffic. And we right? always say so. Berger and I always say you can control so many elements of this race, but there's still some that you're not in control of because of the lap traffic when you get to lap three. Now, I wanna say this, this year's third lap was very different than years past because we ran some different trails and, and it's really so interesting. So there won't be as much lap there traffic There wasn't as much lap traffic as we're accustomed to. Not only did we turn out on lap three and have clean air all the way to the rocks, so, which is incredible, yeah. but we, just the way that the timing worked yeah. out, but we also just had this incredible scenario where we went through all the rock trails and while we passed some people on outer limits and we passed some people on, you know, um, the bottom of, of outer limits, I guess it was, yeah. spooners and outer limits. When you get to the top outer limits, they're only go, they're taking the bypass. We were the only ones that had had to go up that. So we then so cut across. So that to Dave for planning out the race. Fantastic. It took that luck and lap tra traffic <clears throat> element a little bit out well, of it. And so, you know, you end up going up Thor's hammer and blue dot, whereas everyone else has to go up. Um, 
you know, basically to go up Nightmare, you come up and go up Claw Hammer. So they go Claw and Nightmare, and we did that on lap two, and that's where a lot of the traffic was, but we're on two different trails. So we're, again, we're not so seeing So you're missing them. that. So, so the only places that you hit them again is really like, you know, you go through down Chocolate Thunder, which wasn't really much of an issue yeah. going down it, mm -hmm. and you've got some people on idle issues and her problems, yeah. and then when you come up Wrecking Ball. And yeah. it was so crazy, because we go across the desert to get to Wrecking Ball, and we get behind my old car. Oh, that, oh, <laughs> and, I'm like, and it was a hard pass, because so that car is fast. I was gonna ask you, I was gonna say, so on that, you know, uh, lap three, where you got lap traffic, that's, or, or the whole race. But it's Will there's said. Always, there's always one thing that stands out that when you, before you go up on the podium, before you talk to anybody, you look over at your co-driver and you go, how rad was that when we saw this thing on that trail? So what was your one thing of the race that, that you guys went, that was cool when we passed somebody or when somebody was wrecked or like, what's that one thing that you thought was cool? Over the years, we have had some absolutely crazy things. This year's has to be going up King's Veto with no front locker and being able to pull it because that and there trail, was nobody on it. It was just there you. was nobody there. It was yeah. just us. And it and was the super loose, degree of difficulty right? on that trail. That's that's a ten on yeah. the scale. Uh -huh. And to do it with no front locker was like dude, that was that was like my favorite. Like okay, stay in control, use the momentum of the car, apply the front brake to equalize the front brake pressure in places. Don't pick the ideal line, but pick the line that has the two front tires getting equal traction. Because like if there's, an, if there's an undercut for a front tire, you it's can't stop hit the that car. because it won't pull it over. So everything I've learned, like in all the years of wheeling, everything it was like that was put down on that. Pick one. the big rock where you can get traction on and get your one tire on. It. Well, you can't because you need to go you around to pick it because you need to keep two that have tire. equal traction and yeah. not have the ideal yeah, line gotcha. and take the backups in the right places and make the right decisions. So and you nailed that was my Vito. favorite one. That was the one where I was like, you know. Damn, that was Did like. Did you have any backups on that one? Oh, tons, but tons on, of, on purpose, okay. like yeah, yeah. tons. We took us much more up. time than normal, yeah. but mm -hmm. you know, if we had had the front locker, I mean, it was literally like not a one shot, but dang close to a one shot you yeah. know, obstacle for so us. So at this point, you're still, you're leading the race, you're out in front, you're hearing from all the guys on the radio that everybody's charging behind you. You are not in the clear by any means. Nope. They're right behind you. Um, and then and we got a flat on Wrecking Ball. So you got a flat on Wrecking Ball. And now let me ask you this on Wrecking Ball. Did, did, you don't drive the pinch. This thing's too wide, right? You go up the dirt and kind of work your way around. Um, it'll go through any of it. it it's just that we, we picked a line. We actually do go through a harder section of rocks in this car than the ideal line because it's straighter. So I think it's faster and Burger yeah. agrees with me. Uh -huh. So we actually go straight through the middle of a couple of those rock sections where the guys go around and do that stuff on the right. We actually don't go up that stuff on the right at the halfway point of that trail. Um, but at the and, waterfall, you shoot the waterfall up. Oh, so we actually went up Bender Alley this year. Oh, you did? Yeah. You, you didn't hit the waterfall. Okay. Right, so we went up Bender Alley, which was also tough. There was a guy rolled over in our main line and we got a flat tire um, only because, you know, like I said, we, we and it's, you know, we own it. We had the front tire on the one side just stop and it slung the car into the rock on the left and blew the driver's left tire out just you know yeah. completely blew it just like so and you're you, like we're done so you and, have the bfg liners and, right? and it, it blew on the obstacle at the same time you heard the liner blow separately from the tire all at the same time and at, like dang at that, that point you got quite a few rock trails right and so six rock trails left to get to the pit and that was our decision making can we get up the rest of wrecking ball bender alley jack north um, sledgehammer, legit, and Z, you know, the Z trail, whatever you want to call so, it, Zandies. So let's. And so we had to do all those on a flat tire, or do we stop, put us put the spare on? Do we go to sledgehammer, block the trail, and put the tire on? So we had lots of decisions to yeah. make, right? That and is I'm the like, thing. I'm you not that, that guy. You, I'm not that guy. But people do that. But people you can do go it. Block the trail and change the tire. So you guys decided, and I talked to Berger about this. He said, you know what? It's gonna take us longer to get out and change the tire. The car's moving, you're carrying momentum, it's working. Um, so you kept going. And I think and it's I the, don't think you really lost any time in doing that. Well, we probably lost a little bit of time, but we, we th that was where the portals really shined. We lost a tire, oh, the tire's and we flat, still had low. that much ground clearance on the A-arm. And so we were able to pick our way through the rocks at a reasonable pace, you know, up fissure without hitting the big ones, moving around, you know, on and off line to get through and stuff. And you didn't know it, but behind you, Raul had taken a tire and they had had to change that. Actually, I think, 
I haven't actually asked him. I think he might have changed he got it himself out and changed in the himself. desert. Yeah. I think he changed it in the and desert. And our guys changed it. I think it's the fastest pit stop I've ever seen at the Hammer. I mean, they were under 30 seconds. We were in and out of there on the tire. And it was like, all right. And when we got down to the bottom of, of Aftershock, I said to myself, you know, Berger said it out loud. And, and it was like, yeah, I'm like, this is ours. We just got to go do our thing because we know well, we're, we're fast. Ba let's back up a little bit. We're going to rewind just a little bit. So on the third lap, you guys had to go up sledge. And you know, who you compete against, you're competing against the Gomez brothers, right? Yep. And uh, you, maybe you didn't know this at that time, but Darian had broken his car uh, and her problems on the second lap, and he's out of the race, and he's a, he's a competitor, and he can help fellow competitors. So con it's a controversial move. He walked across the, the desert floor <laughs> up to Sledge, and he hung out at Sledge um, to help winch, you know, uh, his team through right um and so when you guys got to sledge did you drive sledge or did you winch it we winched it we had the and flat you, tire you and winched we had the right line on sledge, right line the on new sledge line. The new so line. you just nose the front up burger got out went up there hooked to a, and then winched and it, it through it wouldn't steer on the winch for a second so it took us another backup but burger had us right on the right line and we got up it and no it's problem. still only probably like a two or three minute deal to get through there huh? <clears throat> especially Not, with him you know burger's yeah. so fast so yeah. You know, I think that's our biggest advantage in the car when and we get in those tough rock sections. your winch has the free spool yeah. in the car. Yeah, that so, worn, um, the so platinum. The worn Zeon. platinum. You click yeah. the free spool, he runs up to the rock, hooks it up, boom, you re-engage it. He doesn't have to come back and Doesn't forth. have to come back. And then uh, you winch, he gets in the car, and off you go. Yep, and everything's yep. good. Actually, he ran all the way to the top to the mailbox, basically, so every making sure. Every time I've co-drove riding up sledge, after we got through the plaque line, I always ran to the mailbox because there's a couple you other never sections know if you're in there. You never high center yep. belly out on a rock. You might as well be out. And yep. it's, it's only about 300 yards. It's not super. No, far. it's not. And and burgers now with all the room he has you in the car. You know he runs a lot faster in that section than I do. I, I don't imagine. know. I don't know. But he he's in he's not a runner, but he's in pretty dang good shape. But he has a lot of room in the car now. So for him to get in and belt up quickly, it's incredible. Where he's all compacted in the other car and he had trouble getting to his belts. Now he can just jump in and click, so, click, click, go. You know, so it's you awesome. get out of sledge. You guys had to winch it. Um, Raul is coming up fast behind you. Uh, Darian helps him through. You know, he's he still has to winch, but he just doesn't have to get out as a one seater guy and right. go through Single it. Right, single seater winch. Right, um, and longer. he helped a couple other people. I think he helped Brendan Thompson, a um, couple other people. And obviously, he's not going to help you. You guys are his competitor, right? So no, um, we wouldn't expect. We wouldn't want it any other way. No, and, and I, I think get it's it. it's you know you take every advantage you can out there, Absolutely. right? Yeah. And so I wouldn't have done anything differently. And I I certainly don't think that. I just want to state this like the right way. We own where we failed on Absolutely. the race. Absolutely. And, yeah. and it had nothing to do with that. We gave up, you know, throughout the course of the race, I think we could probably have picked up close to a half an hour between the locker, the flat tire, Which the getting stuck so in the middle of the desert for nothing. So could every other competitor, I'm sure. The right? taking the air bottle. And then obviously the thing that really was the heartbreaker was losing the engine near the and end of the race. And that's what we're going to get to right end. now. So you, you said you and Berger talked to you and said, man, I think we got this one in the, you know, it's wide open from here. Like it was and that's it's where desert the all shines, the way back, right? right? And, yeah. And you get to go through that back lake bed and just open it up. Right? We had tires, we had brakes, and I was, and was the steering. Like, let's let it eat. Let's go. And I was like, you know, and this is kind of a funny story about the steering. You're going to love yeah. this. So once I lost the air locker, steering was awesome. It was fixed because the locker is not <laughs> binding it. it up, right? It was fixed, like, fix the steering. <laughs> we so joke, but we literally are in the car laughing like that. So you're you know, it's like how we desert, feel. Right? And you're. Oh, were, I never got to rip through the desert. It was so on weird. the way back. Yeah, just you know, left left uh, aftershock and got to the spot where I was like, oh, these are so cool through here. There's a couple of, and you may remember these, but they're like rock little waterfalls that are at the bottom of uh, aftershock that are in like a real narrow canyon. Uh -huh. We were jumping them. Yeah. And I'm like, this is so fucking awesome. Excuse me. <laughs> this is so awesome though, right? Yeah, like yeah. we we're jumping the, the new, waterfalls so on the way down. So you just run three laps of the race. You're, you're on the final and sprint to the finish line. fans down there and, and they're the car on. is all together pretty yep. much, yeah. you know? And we think, um, cool, it's go and, time. And, and then you start to feel the motor. Uh, I knew it was soft. I knew it was down on power. I expected the plugs to clean up. I kept thinking it's fouled plugs. We've had this kind of happen. This is a, a problem that's existed for the last three years with the plugs plugs and the tuning and I thought that we were in front of it with the new throttle body that we ran it, it's a different intake 
and the tune felt much better. Um, and I, we actually changed the heat range on the plugs. And I was like, I think we have fixed this, but we hadn't actually had a chance to run a full race on it to find that out. Well, you had guys behind you that had their small issues as well and yep. things going on, flat tires, and, and you're taking off this last sprint through the desert and they're just entering that section too and they're right behind you. you yeah. know, they're, they're minutes behind minutes you. Raul is minutes behind yep. you, right? And, and I, so now it's a sprint to the finish. We got know? onto Emerson. There was one car that was like right, literally right in front of us at, going onto the lake bed. And I'm like, okay, we'll just take the, the left line, had the wind blown to the right. And I'm like, we'll just go right around them. And I was figuring, you know, we could go 135. We were probably going to have to go 115 to pass them. And I knew we could go 115, 120 all the way up to the top of, you know, coming out of Emerson and coming all the way across the, the two track up there. And I was like, we're going to be ripping through here. We got to slow down a little bit for that one section. And then we're going to do it again on the MDR course. And we're mm -hmm, going to be, mm -hmm. we're going to be in good shape. It, it's top speed was 74.5. And it, it, at some point in that section across there for the three miles of Emerson, Burger goes, you got to lift. And I'm like, I know it was vibrating to the point where my fingers were starting to burn on the steering wheel because the vibration was so insane. Whatever the harmonic was of the cylinders that had let go was at the 7,000 RPM kind of vibration field where you're like, oh, and I was just waiting for well, the still crank the to leave. And you the can't crank let the, was going to leave. You can't let the car go bad. You're still in the lead. You, you make it all the way. Um, you, you're coming down Turkey Claw. And at that point, we, you we see the knew. dust behind you. At that point, you know he's right there. We knew he was there. We, there was this, a video that showed up. And I was just kind of blown away to see it because the cameras have gotten so incredible in the helicopter. Oh, yeah. I am pounding on the dashboard. Come on, baby, let's go for like five miles through the desert. Come on, baby, let's go. And a lot of people thought we were hung up in the guy's dust in front of us. And it wasn't that at all. It was just it wouldn't go. We were going the same speed as him at full throttle. So I hate to bring this up, too, is that right on that last ending of the race, you know, everybody's watched the live feed. Everything's going on. Dave got on the live feed and he's commentated. And to be honest with you, I want Dave on the live feed all oh, the time. Dave's fantastic. com commentating was great. It was great to listen to. It was like he was in your guys' seats and knew exactly what you were thinking and everything going on. And, um, and Burger was passing, hyped. Burger there was, was a hyped bunch of there. lap traffic. There's, there's dust. And there was a 90 degree turn in the course. Oh, yeah. And you, the, uh, you know, Jason Shearer, who, you know, you, made the choice to cut that corner to pass a couple guys, get ahead, get out of the dust. And I talked to Berger and Berger says, Jason didn't make that decision. He said, I did. Like we were up against lap, tra lap traffic. You guys were putting, pushing the push to pass for five minutes. Nobody was getting out of the way. You got Raul behind you. You guys are the, the, you know, the, the finishers of the race. These guys are lap traffic. So you made the choice to cut that corner. And some people will say that that 250 feet or 150 feet was uh, going off course. Um, I believe Raul did the same thing, but I don't know. No, um, it, it didn't show it. It's like, you know, one of those things where there was two sides that too, we, we cut in and actually we were like, geez, we're a little further away from you the corner than we first, thought. I actually turned back and then made the turn corner. back. So we were within yeah. the 150 feet right there for sure. And then when the corner came in, we knocked off the edge of it, but there was a couple of reasons. One, I could see the speed that he was accelerating out of the corner with. And I'm like, well, we don't want to door bar him. And yeah. obviously, you got to remember this. That guy's on lap two, and he shouldn't be. And he shouldn't. He should have kind of. He should have. He should have probably said, "Oh, there's there's their leader." Like yeah. you, the people recognize the car enough to be like, "Okay, there's there's, there's the Jason. guy. Yeah. Like, let's let him go here." Yeah. But no, no, he he was on it out of the corner, and I'm like, "Okay, well, we need to make sure we get up in front of him so that we're not gonna, you know, do this game of like let's go like right into the side of him because he's not gonna lift." And so I cut in even tighter, and and that's like I'll take the penalty for it. But I also think it's like one of those things where there's like a little bit of like a in a race, you kind of do some things to make sure that you're not putting yourself in harm's way. And that was one of those and, things. And where I'm, I'm like, going to lead into this penalty here in a minute because the penalties were across the board, right? Mm -hmm. So from there on down Turkey claw and then coming through all the, cross, which was cool by the way, all the cross check coming, you know, that, that is a brutal section right before the finish. Yep. All those 
deep. You can't get on it hard there. You're gonna. We never lifted. You're wreck the car. Yeah. We didn't have a lot of power, but no, we can. We can stay. You can on just stay in the in live there, valve yeah. on the Fox. So he's right behind. You're hitting you. the button on the live valve, and it's stiffening up the oh, car. That's awesome. And it goes like do do do, and you jump them, and you're like, that is so sick. And with my old car, would have you know bottomed and cycled and kicked oh, and yeah. everything else. Now you're just you're you're pinned through that stuff. So now. you come through first place. You started on the first row. You led the race the entire day. Nobody ever passed you. And you're going, I might have lost the race. We knew we lost the race. And you lost the race. Raul came in quicker. Um, so because of his, uh, uh, you know, he started three rows back, I believe. No, I think he was just the row behind us. Okay. And I'm not positive. I think he was in fourth place. So he's second row. Yeah. So he had a one minute. Um, difference and I think he finished you know 11 seconds behind us yeah. so he was ended up 49 seconds or 48 seconds or something on adjusted time so, so we knew that at that point yeah and, um, and I I mean you've got zigs and zags in the road and I could see him and I was like dang you know and, and I had seen him coming for a while that's why we went down turkey claw you know at Mach 1 we were like let's just see what oh, we yeah. can do there. I mean who cares are you gonna do flat you, a tire you, I mean you gotta lay it out you know right there. it yeah. didn't matter so I mean we that's just, a half a mile from the finish yeah, yeah yeah we didn't care if we had another puncture there so you guys come across some other people start coming in uh, Blyler or other people I mean there was it was gap. actually uh, a gap but then there there's some fast guys that all came in in a group so well, that's impressive about the field yeah you know the the, the pace of the race was insane Oh, it definitely was, yeah. yeah. And so let's talk about penalties. So there's a stat that I like is that um, this year only 13 finishers didn't have penalties. Right. So it's not like somebody cut a corner, they got a penalty, or somebody missed the VCP, they got a penalty. Because it wasn't somebody, it's everybody. Yeah. In, John Webb. In the top 10. My boy. So John Webb was the only one in the top 10 one of those 13 that did not have a single penalty and finished the race. Right. And it actually took him from 10th place to 9th place because guess who was 9th before? That's Robbie Gordon. And he had basically like four clipboards full of penalties. Well, and you know, in fairness, he didn't really know the race course pre-run. Yeah. And he did some really good stuff out there too with rolling back over uh, Vaughn and kind of keeping the flow of the race going, I think, at that point. So, you know, th some of those penalties, you're kind of like, well, you screwed up on... on you know, King's veto, but you also like went in there, flipped somebody over, turned around, went back out of it. What are you supposed to do? Turn around, go back through it again? Like so he, he doesn't know. As far you know. as penalties go, um, you know, missing a going 150 feet off the race course because your GPS glitched, you know, some of that uh, stuff, that's all understandable, right? I'm not even sure how they did some of those. Um, there was two second so, penalties. So you had... I had two two second well, I had, penalties. I had it printed out. So you had actually a total of like a minute and something in penalties. And on the way down here, I was talking to Berger on the phone, and we know that that one corner you cut, they gave you 20 seconds. Is that what it was? Well, I'm not sure what... what it's hard to tell which one I'm was not which. sure, yeah. But let's say you got 20 seconds on that, then so there's a minute somewhere else, and Berger and I were trying to figure well, no, out so where it was. It's five times the penalty, so if they yeah. think it's this long. But there was a penalty that was two seconds that, like, Raul hit, I hit, a whole bunch of guys hit. And we that both, was the 102 number. We hit them both twice, and yeah. I'm like, where is it? So we still don't know exactly where it is. They say it's on Melville to keep you in the center of the lake bed, and I'm like, okay. I think those are insignificant. I mean, if there's a two-second penalty, it's well, kind of like... And it's all the guys. So, like, if yeah, you look yeah. at the penalties, yours and Raul's penalties are very close. Uh, except for this one that you have that for a minute, a minute and who knows something. where it was. Yeah. yeah. And so um, that one might be that. We, I'd like to figure it out. But it's weird yeah. because it says it's the fourth VCP. So I'm like, so the that good, couldn't have been the fourth VCP. The good news about this is that Dave actually... Oh, 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 oh it is the fourth VCP. We're just coming at it from the other direction. Yeah, so you hit now it twice. It makes sense. You hit it twice. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's probably that Melville. It's probably line. that corner. Yeah. So the... Now, here's the thing. In years past, there's been penalties. There's been things change around. But we've never seen this full spreadsheet from Dave. And this year, if you go on there, it is a crazy spreadsheet of, of well, all the people that missed it. And I think it's, it's killer that he went all the way through the field and really figured out what everybody did. So everybody you know, has ownership. Yeah, Liam or you know, Leo Donnell or whatever that, that sent it out, I think that they did a good job with the data collection because... That's been a, a difficult thing. Actually, Dave is incredibly good at spreadsheets and databases and has like a really good handle on it. I mean, 
he has records of every race who finished in what position and every detail and everything and he can go back and recall all of it because he's kept incredible records that way but what they just did with this was was really nice because the course is tough to figure out for a lot of these people what I, once they figure it out though, you want to have the guys that are racing each other race the same race course. That's the yeah. goal at the end of the day. Yeah. And you know, it's kind of cool. Like I remember like Eric Miller and I having a conversation one time. It's like, we run every inch of the race course. We're not out there and, trying and to short same course with Webb, the race. Same with us when we, we race. And, and I don't believe anybody purposely misses course. I think not the top guys right you're, now. You're in stuck our in the heat of the moment. You miss something. Um, it's not a big deal. So, but it's gotten uh, tricky, and I, I want to go into it for just a second okay. because it's super interesting what happened when we opened up the UTV class to a desert class. The desert racers came in, and they race VCP to VCP, and so they we started going out, and the race course went up here and made a ninety degree left, and then when you went out there for the race, you saw that the the side by sides had made this unless 45, they put a VCP in the corner, right? They put a forty five degree corner in it and yeah. shaved off, you know, the the up and the down, uh -huh. and so that became more and more prevalent. And so now it's kind of like, well, what are you supposed to do? There's a nice corner right there that everyone sees visually before the actual corner. And if you've ever been in a race car, and you've got the co driver going, you got a left hand turn coming up, and, and you're all like, of a sudden you see oh, here it is, left. you know. Yeah. And so it yeah. gets very difficult to yeah. be like, did you run the race course the way it was intended? And so I think in the future it's only going to get better about like we're going to put vcps here and you corner. have what we didn't have at least i didn't have was i never had vcps in my gps i never knew there was one right here or i would have not been you know over here even though this might have been the dirt road that we all saw and so and i didn't know they were there if we only missed those two and so did raul so i don't think it was intentional but we where we missed it i'm like hmm, well, we got to hit you don't those. even remember well, yeah we didn't even do like it intentionally. some of the people like Robbie Gordon, we know he went up King's Veto and back down in. He missed that, right? Yeah. Uh, Brendan Thompson completely missed Chocolate Thunder. He just made a wrong turn and missed it on lap two on and, and, one of the laps. Yeah, I mean, you know? you know, and in years past, guys that were so good, like Randy Slauson's like, well, yep, I went the wrong way. I'm DQing myself. And you're yeah. like, that's cool. We, we don't have that level of like guy right now yeah. in that stuff because the course has gotten so tough and people are new and it's grown so fast we had 80 rookies this year right they don't all know where to go if i'm wrong the way dave does it is he takes the average time it takes to go through that section that you missed or or did do and he multiplies it times five yeah so and then if, that's if the what penalty. you've missed was um you know the average speed through that versus what you did is the delta. So if it's like you gained 10 seconds here, the penalty would be five times that at 50 seconds. Yeah. Um, the one that I had was a two second advantage. So and so did, so did Raul. We, yeah. we had two different two second advantages. And I'm like, that's a dirt road. So You're going this way or seconds. this way, right? So, so it's 10 seconds. 10 second penalties. Yeah. So it is They're minor infractions, yeah. right? So um, we'll end it at this. The luck thing, you know, I, 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 I'm sorry I said, nah, you know, that's all good. You know, driving a race car, you have luck, but your, your number is 76. What does 76 add up to? No, well, <laughs> that's pretty interesting. Yeah. I hadn't thought about that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what year were you born in? 76. Yeah. I mean, so some of these things start coming into play, right? So, uh, uh, and I know you're a very calculated person, so, um, Anything 13 was my baseball number for a long time, so I think we're okay. But, All right. Um, no, I, I, I think that, you know, coming in second isn't the end of the world because the team's motivated, um, and that's something we didn't get a, a chance to really spend a lot of time on, but a lot happens at that race that isn't about the build on the car or, you know, the design on the car or even the parts on it, but the guys that, that make it happen, and they're stoked on they're not stoked on second, but they're stoked to know that they have a car that was brand new that went out there and ran a nearly flawless race and has the, the pace in it to be a winning contending car. And the effort that they put in was insane. Like it literally is the whole time. And we, we were a rare team to pre-run in the same car we race in, re-prep the whole car in the middle of the lake bed, get it all ready for qualifying get it back ready for the race. I mean, we, the guys put in so much effort out there. And it's I stopped, absolutely insane. I stopped by and saw you and the guys in, in you know, in your, in your camp. And I don't want to take any credit because I don't those hardly guys, touch it I mean, anymore. it is a well-oiled machine. Yeah. I mean, there's oh. a regimen every day. Everybody has their own job. And, and I'd love to like look into that a little bit more next year and show everybody what's going on. Cause it's a great team to kind of benchmark your team off of. Um, well, in ending it, we've been yep. going for a long time. 
Uh, any regrets and anything you want to do differently for next year? Yeah, you know, I think that um, Ford is interested in trying to solve the motor issue. So I'm going to spend the rest of the season going out and redoing the race until we know we have this engine issue behind us and dealing with a couple of the other little failures, make sure we got the airlocker thing licked and stuff like that and keep doing the durability testing. Um, you know, the regret is always the same thing. Never enough testing. You show up with the new car, you don't have the miles under your belt. You need the miles. And so we're going to put our effort into that. We're not racing anything else. We're just going to focus Get it on ready King for the next year, King of the Hammers. Yeah. And so, yeah. you know, I hope that we can do at least three full simulations of the race where we're actually pretending we're in the race and running the whole rock trail section as if we're in the race. For the heat you know? cycles and everything else. Every part of it, yeah. you know, uh -huh. and, and that's the only thing I regret this year is that we didn't have the time to do all that stuff or we would have probably found these issues. Well, obviously, just like everybody else, we look forward to seeing what you do next year and I look forward to seeing what everybody else does next year too. It's only getting bigger and better. Thanks, Thank you, brother. Jason. Oh, yeah. I appreciate it. Anytime.